This is why Small Business Matters from Northumbria University. Supporting small businesses with the Help to Grow Management Programme. Hello and welcome back to Why Small Business Matters. My name is Matt Sutherland and in today's episode we discuss the world of technology and explore how the push towards digital transformation can help many small businesses overcome some of the most important commercial challenges. It's a digital generation where everything is at at people's fingertips, you know, Um, The millennial generation has grown up having access to digital like never before. In that top right-hand corner of England, that little island, that those guys are doing world-leading gaming tech. Yeah, you're damn right we are, and that's something that we're proud of. They were the voices of Dr. Ashmita Randawa and Jamie Hardesty, two people who know just how powerful the process of technology can be in supporting the needs of small businesses. Ashmita is Director of Research and Development at Sunderland Software City, also the Visiting Professor at the National Innovation Centre for Data at Newcastle University, where she co-leads the work for the Hartree Centre, a dedicated facility providing valuable technology support and R&D to small businesses. I'm also thrilled to be joined by Jamie Hardesty, Director of Communications and Ecosystem and development at Sunderland Software City and editor of Newcastle Tech Digest, work that sees him firmly embedded within the technology community, engaging with strategic partners to support small business. Welcome to the podcast. Lovely to see you both. And thank you for joining me on today's podcast. Now, I've been looking forward to today because a lot of our listeners are really curious around this term digital transformation. What do we mean by digital transformation? It's very important that I start by saying, you know, we're not just talking about um, about shiny technology here. We're talking about business practice. So, you know, culture, attitudes, identities. But I think, you know, there is a scale. And um, there are still many, many thousands, in fact, um, businesses which, which operate in regions like the Northeast, which, which have very little digital practice within them. You know, we work with a lot of companies for example, companies in the manufacturing industry, you know, people creating component parts of machines in, in Team Valley who um, might still be counting their stock in paper and pencil. Now, obviously, we know that there are digital ways and, and systems which we can help help them learn and, and introduce and incorporate into their processes, which effectively makes them more efficient, more productive, you know, helps them to save time. But equally, digital transformation exists all all the way um, at the other end of the spectrum as well. There are, you know, game changing, innovative, high flying tech startups that we work with. So people who are generating their own IP and they're really creating disruptive products. We work with one really exciting startup, which is which is disrupting the med tech space and working in hospitals. Um, They work with us to look at uh, IoT device implementation. So. You might think that they're a really kind of sexy, shiny startup, really high flying, but that doesn't mean their digital transformation journey has has ended. You know, there are there are different levels of of maturity. Now, I think it's probably worth me bringing Ashmitter in at this point, who who works with a lot of companies across different levels of that maturity scale. So I'll I'll pass it over to Ashmitter for now. Thanks, Jamie. And I think you know just to build on on Jamie's sort of points. I think um, for the academics who might be listening in, there's there's quite a bit of research that's been done to try and scope out that definition of, of digital transformation. And if anybody's interested, there's a there's a scoping review that was done uh, by Gregory Vial in 2019 that actually looked at close to 300 papers uh, and tried to actually come through with the definition of of digital transformation and. In this paper, he observed that there were no fewer than, if if I'm not mistaken, about 23 distinct definitions across these different articles that that he reviewed. And and I think this is why it's really important to sort of appreciate the nuance of what Jamie was trying to say, because digital transformation is going to mean something different to a business, depending upon the size they are or the sector they're in, or what kind of culture they already have within an organization. But if I, you know, to add to Jamie's layman's definition, really, you know, when we're trying to describe digital transformation, it's not just about the adoption of digital technology. It's about that cultural change. It's about thinking about the capabilities that an organization is going to need. It's really trying to take that holistic view that's required to 
think about how the adoption of digital technology will benefit the business, potentially the end users. And if we broaden that out, individuals and ultimately sort of the economy and society as a whole. So, so you know, I just wanted to, to add to that a little yeah. bit. I love the way that there isn't sort of universal definition, but actually this is a this is a difficult beast, isn't it? And actually it also requires... It started a whole... with a big question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult, it's a difficult thing to really get our teeth into. But I'm thinking about the small businesses that listen to this podcast. Some of them feel under pressure to get into this, get onto this journey of digital transformation. And actually, I wonder if it's worth stripping it back and thinking, so why are some of the reasons why why businesses step into this arena? Jamie talked about efficiencies. He talked about practices. What are some of the clear commercial benefits for the growing appetite around um, digital transformation? What we quickly found is these these people, these individuals, these organizations were brilliant at what they did. You know, they were butchers in Northumberland were brilliant at being butchers, but of course they weren't great at um, implementing the latest PPC or digital marketing or SEO strategies into their businesses. How, how could they be? But by coming to us and, and working with us and getting a taste for, for digital and us effectively empowering not only some tools which which they could use and, and apply but equally kind of different ways of spending their time what we found were, were people people quite quickly realized that actually you know in in the, the point we're in now in the 21st century customers buying habits are changing the, the way in which we advertise the way in which we connect um you know, there are so many different routes to market. And I think I would sort of surmise this with, you know, digital transformation can do a lot of the, the heavy lifting for businesses, allowing your butcher, your florist, your, you know, your brilliant um, tourism body to continue doing what they're expertly brilliant at doing. But actually, just, just to maybe make their lives a little bit easier and open some doors that perhaps they didn't even know existed, right? Yeah, I think I just want to add to that a little bit, Jamie, especially the point where you said, you know, the markets are changing. If we think about it, it's a completely different generation that businesses are now having to sort of adapt to it, right? Where it's a digital generation where everything is at, at people's fingertips, you know. Um, the millennial generation has grown up having access to digital like never before. And, you know, the, the subsequent generations are just even more expectant of, of what, you know, can be made available to them from from a um, from an information standpoint and from a type of product or a service standpoint. Right. So I think, you know, to Jamie's point where COVID might have been the push for for businesses to adopt digital to survive and get through the pandemic and make sure they kept through the the the, their lights on. I think what we're now seeing is it's now opening up opportunities for businesses to diversify their business models, to really think about new types of products and services, and really move from sort of, you know, this was this has been said by a lot of people that that mode of surviving to thriving, and digital is really the enabler of that. There is this lovely, both of you put it nicely, about this behavioural shift. And COVID was a catalyst, but actually there has been this shift that's, which has been sort of drip, drip feeding away. Ashmita, I wonder if you can give us a little bit of clarity around the role of Software City, because Jamie's already alluded that that some of these businesses that had an appetite maybe needed a bit of steer. And is that the role of Sunderland Software City? That is indeed a a major role of of Sunderland Software City. You know, and if we think about where Jamie's talked about us supporting businesses that are thinking about that first step in adoption, there's a real scale within that as well. You know, you've got those that have never thought about digital, still do everything on paper, still are, you know, working with their suppliers very much even on a on a trust based framework, right? That's just this implicit trust that's been built over the years. And it's just an exchange of paper and sometimes just a phone call, right? So it's really getting them to think about how digital could perhaps save them some time, make them some more money, start to potentially, you know, um, get them to comply with with requirements that are changing as well. You know, the world's moving forward in different regulatory manners as well. And so getting them to think about how it works for them as a business, but equally work with them to map that into, into a roadmap that makes sense for them. Because 
adopting all the digital in the world isn't going to make sense for a candle maker who potentially doesn't have the resources or the funding to to be able to do that. So it's really about having that initial conversation, understanding what is the challenge that they're facing as a business, and then getting them to understand if digital is the right thing. You know, we're not going to be pushing everybody towards the next sexy thing that, in, you know, everybody doesn't need to be adopting AI or everybody doesn't need to be thinking about quantum. But really, what is the right use of digital for you as a small business? But at the other end of that scale, you know, you have businesses, you know, who <clears throat> have adopted digital, who have taken those first steps and are ready for that more advanced digital technology. They are ready to think about the adoption of, oh, I've collected all this data. How do I make it work better for me? How do I get insights from it? How do I then use that to potentially drive a different kind of business model for myself, right? So it's a real spectrum of businesses. And that's where the different programs and partnerships and offerings that we've created, because we can't do this in isolation, right? At the end of the day, as Jamie said, Sunland Software City is here to grow the tech ecosystem of the Northeast. And what better way to do that than to establish these collaborative partnerships to deliver programs that make sense for small businesses to go on different points in their journey. And, you know, we have businesses that weave in and out of different programmatic offers that we've got. And equally, you know, I think we're very honest in saying we don't have that expertise, but we know who does. And we're going to point you in that direction. And I think that's incredibly important to be honest with a small business. I know a lot of the small businesses that I work with would could potentially be intimidated actually about going into to, to Sunderland Software City. That I, mean, I think they'd be highly attracted by the offer, but actually, it's a big move, isn't it, to get in and, and, and potentially put themselves into that kind of space to have those conversations. How do you support businesses that are coming in for the first time with with this ambition to um, to sort of embrace um, new technology? We've got some fantastic people that that are part of the organization that are working on programs um, where really it's about, one, demystifying what the technology is. So there's no jargon that'll be used. It's really about what's your business about? What do you want to accomplish? And really, what does digital then mean in that space, right? Because there's no point saying you're going to need tens and thousands of pounds in order to go digital, because that's not always the case, right? You can't come at it from a, um, you know, from a one size fits all approach. And, and this is where in particular, our program in the Northeast, which is focused on digital adoption, has really been successful. You know, we've supported, and Jamie, I'm sure are going to correct me on the numbers here, you know, uh, we've supported over 300 organizations to think about the adoption of digital technology just in the north of Tyne combined authority region alone, right? And that's through one program. And this is really about inviting them in, having an honest conversation with them, conducting a review that really goes through what is right for your business, and then moving them on to that next step and says, and sometimes that says, you're not ready right now, and that's okay, right? Here's the things you need to think about, right? Or you might feel like you're not ready, and that's okay too, right? So, um, but I think it's about being honest, it's about being clear, and it's about not trying to upsell the shiny thing. I'm curious about the landscape. There will be people looking at this thinking, actually, what what what, what Ashmit has just sort of explained there sounds really, really sensible and something that they'd like to get their teeth into. What's the landscape look like? What are the type of, give us a flavour for the type of new technologies that are being discussed by some of your colleagues within Sunderland Software City? Okay, so I, I suppose just, just to very quickly tie off first what, what Ashmit was saying. So that that program uh, which we launched and you know is still continuing today since we launched it in the in the pandemic um, very very early in 2020 is a program called Digital Pathfinders and it's um, you know we start with the diagnosis and then we really uh, delve down into the kind of tactics the the, the 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 digital tactics that you could employ you know to support your business as you grow. Um, but I mean, that's one of many things that we do at Sunland Software City, quite frankly. And we, you know, what I suppose the pertinent thing is we, we, we move and we operate where there is need in the market, you know, where there is a failure that we then move to plug that gap. Um, so, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, we knew that sectors were under real threat um, because of the pandemic. So hence us creating that program, you know, sort of zooming out. We are, we're all about growing the tech sector in Northeast England. So we, we have skills programs. We help people explore careers. 
We have startup programs to increase our, our stock of tech businesses here in the region. And, uh, and we have some of our more advanced innovation programs, which really help um, companies, not just with the first steps of digital adoption, but really looking at the, at the end scale of, of digital transformation, looking at implementing and really understanding those advanced digital technologies as well. And within that bracket, to answer your question, Matt, you know, we um, were very lucky that we're part of the Digital Catapult Network. So uh, Ashmita runs Digital Catapult Northeast Valley. Um, we work with a lot of, of really ambitious businesses here in the region, um, you know, companies which are looking to explore the, the, the latest technologies. And again, Ashmita will be able to, to talk about this as Jamie said, you know, a big part of growing the Northeast tech ecosystem has been providing access and expertise to infrastructure um, around surrounding this advanced uh, technology, as well alongside, um, you know, programs of activity that businesses can engage with. So um, one of the ways, uh, one of the big sort of achievements for the digital catapult in the region uh, from, from the adoption of advanced technology perspective has been the development of a facility called Proto which really uh, has helped cement uh, Gateshead Council's and the region's ambitions around growing an immersive cluster. And this was really born out of the need to work with companies in a fail fast, safe, collaborative R&D environment, right? To get them to, one, understand what immersive technology is, right? How it can actually be used in their business and what crazy fun things could they come up with once they'd you know done that understanding and in the last year uh through through some serious sort of funding that was acquired via uh UKRI uh, Digital Catapult has partnered with an organization called Target 3D to develop an advanced media production studio within this building that is that is Proto. So we now operate an immersive lab space and an advanced media production studio. And that's just one piece. You know, we're starting to now push the bounds, you know, more with 5G and immersive. We've got a new lab space and, and co-working program that's going to open uh, in, in Eldon Square, which has been a really exciting announcement for us. I'm just going to pivot a little bit and, and sort of highlight another important partnership that's been recent that Sunland Software City has developed. And it's allowed us to develop capability, um, you know, for the region in a different way. And that is through our partnership uh, with the National Innovation Center for Data. So in partnership with the National Innovation Center for Data, we now operate um, a Hartree Center. The Hartree Center Northeast Hub is it currently has one program that's active which is called the HNCDI program, which um, small and medium-sized businesses can access. And um, basically, it's for them to access support around the adoption of, hey, I'm now, wait, what's data? All the way from what's data to, hang on a second, I've identified a challenge that I need some creative really smart people from the university to tell me how to solve that challenge. And I know it's probably going to require AI and machine learning techniques to enable me to do so. Jamie, tell me um, tell me more about the Digital Pathfinder. Yeah, so Digital Pathfinders is one of many uh, support programs that, that we offer. Um, it's one that we're really proud of because specifically the end users are those um, non-technical companies by nature here in the region. So uh, in a nutshell, this is a fully funded program which helps businesses, charities, uh, social enterprises across Newcastle, North Tyneside, Northumberland. And basically what we're doing is we're helping them uh, adopt new technologies, which will specifically help them you know, drive their organization's productivity. It will help them become, um, you know, have, have a more successful performance, allow them to be a bit more resilient in the face of economic headwinds. Um, so, you know, we have some internal digital experts who are really friendly, really lovely people who, who are sector experts, but they, they thrive on, on helping people. So we're lucky to have them. Um, so they, they offer one to one support with our clients. But equally, we do a lot of specialist events as well. So we'll pick a shared theme. We'll pick a topic. You know, we get a lot of feedback from different industries, um, businesses, have heard about maybe what a CRM is, but they don't really know how how to incorporate that, or um, maybe some social media tips, whatever it might be. We'll pick some shared topics and we'll put some specialized events in where it offers a way that um, sort of 
peers who are in attendance can can network and share challenges, can solutionize together. So it's one of our um, one of our, our newer programs, which which came out of the pandemic, but it's still going strong today, and we're. It's one we're really proud of, Matt. Ash Mitte. Uh, just for context, can you give me background to the digital catapult, please? So uh, that's that's a great question, to be honest. So, I mean, established by Innovate UK in 2011, catapults are meant to provide this combination of um, R&D, access to facilities and, and expertise to help literally catapult UK business innovation, right? And there's a network of, of nine catapults uh, that exist, and we're very fortunate in the Northeast. We actually have four that are within the region. Digital Catapults, raison d'etre, um, and the Digital Catapult has been active for 10 years, is to really drive forward the acceleration of advanced digital technology and to be that authority in the UK um, to help businesses really think about that adoption of advanced digital tech. Now, where I said Digital Catapult just celebrated its ten year, its tenth birthday last year, the Digital Catapult Northeast Tees Valley team has been alongside uh, DC or Digital Catapult for nine of those years. So we've really been growing regional activity for as long as as the central offices have really been open. It's worth knowing for your listeners that there are. Uh, four centres for the Digital Catapult. Uh, the central offices are based in London. The Northeast Tees Valley is one of the oldest centres that's open. There's now, um, the, not now, there is a centre in Northern Ireland and there's also a growing presence that we now have in the Southwest. Um, and this sits alongside a network of labs and test beds and, you know, expertise and short programmes and collaborations up and down the UK. <laughs> You're listening to Why Small Business Matters. Find out how Northumbria University can help your business thrive through the Help to Grow Management Programme, delivered by leading small business and enterprise experts from Northumbria University with the support of leading figures from industry and experienced entrepreneurs. The programme supports senior managers of small and medium-sized businesses to boost their business's performance, resilience and long-term growth. The 12-week programme is 90% funded by the government and the fee payable by participants is £750 and has been designed to allow participants to complete it alongside full-time work. The in-depth, high-quality curriculum supports you to build your capabilities in leadership, innovation, digital adoption employee engagement, marketing, responsible business and financial management. By the end of the programme, you'll develop a business growth plan to help you lead your business to realise its potential. To find out more about the programme, the modules, eligibility and fees and delivery dates, go to northumbria.ac.uk slash help to grow. You're listening to Why Small Business Matters. My name is Matt Sutherland and my guests in today's episode are Dr. Ashmite Randauer and Jamie Hardesty. Both are directors at Sunderland Software City. Jamie, give me a sense of um, the Northeast tech sector, because certainly it's very much in vogue and on the rise. But what is it and why it's important? I, I typically look at um, individuals or companies who are creating and developing their own unique technologies so these are um, typically founders who are they've spotted a problem they're trying to solve that problem and they've effectively got a hypothesis as to how they can create something new that will create a better state of play so um you know people who are creating these new products or services um based around digital technology and in the tech sector you know you've got You've got things like your developer community. You've got um, you've you've got high potential startups. You've got accelerators. You've got tech hubs. Um, you know you you've got um, the rest of the ecosystem. You've got universities. You've got connectors and established businesses as well. But the the tech sector, I think, where it kind of it differs from the mantra of well, isn't everything digital these days? You know, we're seeing all industries digitize you know as we know as we've discussed but the tech sector itself as as a vertical in its own right for me at least is um it is it's those um yeah those those individuals those companies creating and developing new technologies in what role jamie does the five northeast universities have in 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 all of this in this work because we work really closely together and we have some really good relationships between the five universities are they also 
at the coalface? Are they also enablers to this to this activity? Absolutely. Um, and I think it's, you know, again, that, that humble nature, maybe, maybe we don't talk about it enough, but um, I think it's something we should be massively proud of in, in the region. And, you know, we know that um, universities aren't exactly one sort of um, homogenous entity, right? They're built up of different departments. So if you look at it through the lens of creating a, a skilled sort of future workforce, you've got Teesside Uni has got um, dedicated games development courses. You've got, um, there are more uh, computer scientists coming out of Newcastle University itself than, than any other university in, in the country, right? You know, we've got some real dedicated um, credentials in and around STEM as well. But equally, it's not just about kind of churning out a workforce or getting people who are ready to fill some of these uh, in-demand jobs in the economy, you know, the universities have, um, you know, dedicated startup departments. They have, um, you know, they have wings and branches which effectively um, put wraparound services to uh, their undergraduates and postgraduates, where they'll um, they'll help them with business plans. They'll give them room to kind of grow and to test their entrepreneurial ideas. So it's not just about, um, you know creating a skilled workforce it's about helping foster that entrepreneurial and, and kind of innovative ecosystem culture that Ashmita alluded to earlier an example that that always pops into my mind is we've just supported a startup that that spun out of a social science accelerator and is now moved in to receive deep tech support and you know when we talk about you know, there's bridging because there's always this this artificial divide between, you know, STEM and non-STEM disciplines. And at the end of the day, if we're going to solve those grand challenges, it's going to require a blending of all of those disciplines to come together. And I think of that as this beautiful example of, hey, look, the social science accelerator, you know, we've now provided them deep AI support, right? And so, and then where do we go from there? But I think the the collaborative spirit that all all of the universities in the region have have demonstrated, you know, we work really closely with Northumbria, for example, uh, where as part of our our partnership in the AMP Studio, we've developed a master's program uh, for for immersive tech, you know, and and you know that's that's a, a new kind of of sort of collaboration for us as well, and you know, really bringing that to. To young people, you know, giving them access to this space is is kind of groundbreaking in in this space. You know, we've been working closely with Sunderland University, uh, for example. If we're thinking about that creation of that tech talent pipeline, you know, it has to start young. So, giving those sort of school interventions and having people think about what digital career means, what a career in the tech sector means. You know, how where could they see themselves? You know, there's a lot of work we've been doing with Sunderland Uni. And then equally with with Durham, we've been exploring, uh, you know, opportunities around, you know, there's one of my team members is actually doing his PhD at Durham, where he's exploring the philosophy of death in the metaverse, you know, and having those sort of, you know, collaborative opportunities. I don't think people appreciate how much the universities are willing to engage. And it's about finding, you know, the 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 ways in which to engage with universities and academics because we all are working towards different metrics and impacts but at the ultimate end goal it's about either helping the individual or helping the business move forward so it's about finding the right collaborative approach to make that happen looking to the future what are the three things that businesses should be aware of which will come in probably into their day-to-day business activity AI and certainly generative AI has been sort of disrupting businesses. I think people have got a little bit carried away, if I'm if I'm quite honest. I I do not think um, some of the off the shelf um, generative AI and large language model tools that that we're seeing um, can truly be trusted right now. Um, so you still need that degree, a, a large degree of um, human scrutiny. So you know. If you if you are a small business owner and you think, oh, I, I'm not a great content writer, but I need some content on my website or I need to populate my app with some words. If you just run it through um, an, an AI assistant, you know, it will not get the right tone for your business. It will not, um, you know, the, the veracity of what it's saying might not actually be true. Um, however, I think it, it's fair to say that those models will improve in five years time so you might think okay well great uh 
I'll, 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 uh, I'll pull up my digital transformation for five years. No, I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious. But you, you might think, okay, well, um, it might not be too ready right now, but it will be in the future. I'm sure there will still be the element of, of human challenge, you know. that I still believe hard work is synonymous with success. I still believe as human beings, um, it's our duty to, to learn, improve, embed knowledge into our operations, no matter what we're doing. But I think we absolutely, certainly as a writer myself, I'm keeping a very close eye on generative AI. Well, Jamie, I'm going to add um, potentially two technologies that I think are, are ones to watch, partly from what businesses are starting to talk about within the region, but equally internationally. And, you know, and I think 5G and wireless infrastructure capabilities starting to play a bigger role in the region. And, and you know, what that means, you know, from whether it's Sunland smart city ambitions and that overlaying across different across different sectors. But equally, how far are we going to push the boat? You know, if we horizon scan, you know, there's news about, you know, where DARPA is starting to think about a moon base. You know, what does 5G and, and a 4G or a wireless infrastructure network mean on a moon base? And, you know, really starting to push, you know, where are we going to be five years from now? And is there going to be 5G on the moon? Why are we? Why, why is there 5G on the moon? And then I think the other one, which I'm watching very in, you know, it, I'm very interested to see where this is going to go, is more and more businesses are starting to talk about quantum and, and try and wrap their head around what quantum computing could do, would do, then there's some really innovative startups and, and businesses in the region that are starting to participate in quantum technology access programs that, you know, some stuff, things that, that digital catapults run and equally, you know, starting to explore what that means from a cybersecurity perspective or from solving these optimization problems. So, there's some real interesting noise that I personally am starting to hear that I'm just keeping a keeping an ear on, really. Ashmiti, can you tell me how Sunland Software City can help small businesses? Jamie has alluded to some of this uh, through some of the the different programs that we offer, but there's some real standout um, examples that that stick in my mind, you know. And one of the ones is is through. Um, one of the business challenges that we actually ran on behalf of Sunland City Council, as as people might may or may not be aware, Sunland City Council has ambitious net zero targets. You know, uh, wanting to be uh, carbon neutral by twenty forty, um, sorry twenty thirty, I should say, ahead of you know the the UK government's uh, net zero targets. And you know, one of the challenges that we ran with them, and um, as part of Digital Catapult's uh, program uh, to encourage the adoption of IoT. Uh, you know, was was really to think about how um, IoT could be could be leveraged for um, energy in businesses, and, and sorry, how IoT could be leveraged to help reduce energy consumption in buildings and and across basically the city. And so we ran a business challenge on in behalf of Sunland City Council, and you know this was at a time. Uh, where we were really looking for innovative startups, small and medium sized businesses, and we we offered um, uh, you know in partnership with the council funding to to the to the companies to develop a uh, proof of concept, with the goal to actually trial the solution at a location in Sunderland. And you know the the business that was successful has actually now become a long term partner for Sunderland City Council, and that's been really transformative transformative for for that particular business. And you know that's just one example really that I can think of because. You know, as you can imagine, there's, there's others that have been on a, on a similar sort of journey as well. Thank you to my guests, Ash Mitter and Jamie. And don't forget to check out previous episodes of the podcast, exploring award-winning edtech and knowledge exchange with Kevry, and solving problems of the future with Joe Marshall and Stuart Wilkinson. And if you'd like to find out more about the Help to Grow Management Programme, go to northumbria.ac.uk forward slash help to grow. Thank you for listening and we'll catch you next time on Why Small Business Matters. 